Praise the Lord. A, a, a kindergartner teacher was observing her classroom of children while they drew, and she would occasionally walk around to see each child's artwork. As she came to one little girl who was working diligently, the teacher asked what the drawing was. The little girl replied, I'm drawing God. The teacher paused and said, but no one knows what God looks like. Without missing a beat or looking up from her drawing, the girl replied, they will in a minute. <laughs> Amen. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Let's turn to the book, first book of the Bible, chapter 5, Genesis chapter 5. Amen. Praise the Lord. No service tonight. Remember that, okay? Hallelujah. Amen. But we'll have prayer meeting Tuesday and Wednesday. We have service and so forth. All right. Praise God. Chapter 5 of the book of Genesis. Brother John, I gave you verse 19 to start with, but I think I'm going to start with verse 18, chapter 5. Hallelujah. Lord, help us to preach today. Amen. Praise God. Chapter 5, the first book of the Bible, the book of beginnings, Genesis. And Jared lived 100, 160 and two years, and he begot Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. 962 years old. Isn't that incredible? And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him. Today, praise God, by the grace of God, I want to minister on the thought of walking with God. Amen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we come to you, the name of the Lord, we thank you, God, for the opportunity. As I stand behind this sacred desk, I pray, God, for your help, your power, your strength, your ability to minister thy word. I pray for the fire of the Spirit of God to burn with inside of my heart. I thank you for the body of Christ, everybody that's here. I pray, Lord, that you'll open their hearts and their ears to receive of thy word that will be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit here today. We want to lift up the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would draw all people unto you, Father. Thank you, God, for this mighty time, this day we have today in your presence. As we gather together, we ask all in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. You may be seated, and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to talk a little bit today, if you'll open your heart to the Lord about walking with God. I mean, we'd be a whole lot better off if the church would follow the example of Enoch. Enoch uh, is only mentioned in a few scriptures in the Bible, but what's said about him reveals to us what God's looking for in this present generation of people who will be completely devoted to pleasing God. God is looking for those who will be willing to walk with him. Is anybody in this house today that say, I'm willing to to walk with God. Raise your hand. I'm willing to walk with God. I want to talk to you today about walking with God. I can't express to you how important it is. Uh, your walk really is with the Lord. We're living in a time when so many are pulling, so many things are pulling you in so many different directions. Uh, I mean, the world pulls you one way. The devil pulls you another way. The flesh pulls you one way. These days can be very challenging, uh, but I want to encourage you to take uh, your walk with God very seriously and uh, make it the highest priority in your life. Uh, Genesis Chapter 5 talks about a man by the name of Enoch. Genesis 5 and 21 says, Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begot Methuselah. Methuselah means when he is gone, it will come. It's a prophetic name. When he is gone, it will come. It's speaking about the flood. And we know after Methuselah died that the flood came. We see in the next chapter, in chapter 6 of Genesis, the pending judgment of God that came upon the wickedness that was on the earth. Listen, thank God that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Therefore, Noah and his family were saved from the destruction and the judgment of God. I want you to think about this. Only eight people of all the people on the face of the earth, only eight people got saved. Only eight people were saved 
uh, uh, from the judgment of God. Only eight people would listen to the word of the Lord. And Jesus said that before the coming of the Lord, it'll be like the days of Noah. And I'm finding today there are a lot of people that will hear about God, but they don't want to live for God. They push God away. They shove God out of the way. They make no room for him in their hearts or in their lives. But I want to encourage you today. Open your heart to God because I want to say whether you like to hear it or not, the Bible is clear that there is a judgment day that is coming upon the wicked on the earth. The Bible said that Enoch had begotten Methuselah. Methuselah lived 969 years. He's the oldest recorded life in the Bible. Methuselah was 969 when he died. And after that, he died. The flood came. This and of itself is a prophecy. When Enoch named his son Methuselah, he was actually prophesying. And we all know that the prophecy came to pass. Being that Enoch had children tells us that he was a married man. He had a wife. It tells us he was a husband. He had children. And so when Enoch was 65 years old, he became a dad. Then he lived another 300 years. Actually, Enoch was still quite a young man, even at 300 years old. And I mean, think about this. This would be equivalent in our day and time as somebody that maybe is about 36 years old because they were living back at that time to be like 800 and 900 years old. But that's a long time to live. Can't imagine living that long on this earth. But that's the way it was towards the beginning because sin had not had its full effect on the human race. But as you read the Bible, you'll see that the human life digressed, it decreased over the years to now. The Bible says that you won't find anybody that will live to be past 120. I don't know. I think I read somewhere not long ago they found somebody that was like 107 years old, 110 years old. Uh, folks, listen to me. I, I, I'm sorry. I love everybody, but I don't want to live to be 107. I don't want to live to be 110. I want a new glorified body, amen, that we'll get when we go to God in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm, and I tell you, folks, I'm... I'm 60 years old as of last week. Amen. And my body is letting me know that I'm 60 years old. Amen. It's letting me know. I mean, I, I'm like, oh, no, this knee hurts. Oh, no, this knee hurts. I mean, right after my birthday, I, I, I pulled my sciatic nerve. I'm, I'm like limping around. Oh, oh, Lord, hallelujah. Amen. I tell you, I can't wait to, to get my glorified body. The Bible said that after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. But notice the Bible said that Enoch walked with God. It means that he knew God. It means that he's a man of faith. And, and we see this in the book of Hebrews. It's says that he pleased God. Speaking of Enoch, it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. See, walking with God is to please God, and to please God is to walk with God. Enoch was a man of faith. He believed God. He had this testimony. He was a man that put his trust in the Lord. Enoch walked with God before the flood, so we know that it wasn't an easy time to walk with God. Enoch was living in perilous times. Most of the earth was full of sin. Most of the earth was full of wickedness. The Bible said, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's in Genesis chapter 6. But I can tell you, I believe that God can say just about the same thing here today in which we're living in this world. In fact, the evil, the sin, the wickedness was so bad that God was sorry that he made man. He was grieved in his heart. The sin that goes on around here grieved the heart of God. I don't know if we really look at it that way, but God sure does. When we're not faithful, it grieves the heart of God. When we're not obedient, it grieves the heart of God. When we walk after the flesh, it grieves the heart of God. When we live a sinful lifestyle, it grieves the heart of God. But praise God that the Lord can look down on this earth and find a few people that could walk with God. Bible says this, that Noah walked with God. That's right, Noah walked with God. God said to Abraham, I'm almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. It expresses is that these men knew God. They experienced God. They had a relationship with the Lord. You know, oh, Lord Jesus. Man, there's a lot of nonsense going on today. 
Man, there's so much foolishness and nonsense and idiocy going on today. It's incredible. But I recently read where someone said the Bible doesn't say anywhere about having a relationship with God. That's what they said. They said no, the Bible doesn't say anything about having a relationship with God. Lord, have mercy. Amen. I actually read that in a book. Amen. If I, that person was there, I probably threw the book at him. But anyway, uh, they said, God, the Bible doesn't say anything about having a relationship with God. These people write books about the Bible, but they don't know the Bible. They don't know the Bible. And I, I, listen, I'm not sure they know God. These people that are forever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, that they're blind to spiritual truth. The Bible said the blind lead the blind, and they all fall in the ditch, and that's what you've got going on today. Don't watch and listen to everything or, or believe everything that you see or believe everything that you read. Listen, the Bible said knowledge of the truth and salvation go hand in hand. What does that mean? A person that is saved is one who comes to the knowledge of the truth. There are people that can quote the Bible, but they have never come to the knowledge of the truth. They're not saved. Thank you, brother. Amen. Okay. All right. Hold, well, let's, oh, just hold on. We'll, 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 we'll listen to that a little bit later, okay? All right. Okay, just hold on. I'll, I'll, come, I'll come to you. I'll come to your door in a minute, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I'll come to your door in just a moment, okay? Hallelujah. Amen. But the fact that you're walking with God expresses the idea that you know God. Paul was saved, and he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know God experientially. Before I got saved, I knew about God. I was in and out of church. But now that I'm saved, I know God. Do I have a witness in this house? He lives in my heart. I know his voice. I sense his presence. I've experienced his power. My life has been transformed by the power of the blood of Christ. Amen. It's not that you know something about God, but you know God. You've experienced God in your life. You're walking with God. It means uh, you're not walking in sin. It means you're not walking according to the ways of the world. Uh, in fact, if you're walking with God, uh, you're going to have uh, wind in your face. Uh, the, uh, there's contrary winds of this world are, are going to be blowing against you. You're not walking according to the lust of the flesh. It indicates that you're, your walk is holy. Your walk is pure. You're walking in righteousness. Uh, you're walking according to the spirit of the Lord. The Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but walk according to the what? Spirit. The person this person walks according to God's word. They walk according to God's will, God's ways they're being led by the Holy Ghost if they're walking with God then their walk is contrary to the ways of the world, contrary to the ways of sin and the flesh and the devil those who walk in the spirit are walking with God. In fact, Psalm 1, 1 and 2, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is what? In the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. See, this person is one who, who has a walk with God. They're not walking in sin. They're not walking in the paths of a sinner of sinners. They're not sitting in the counsel of the ungodly. They're not joining in with the scornful. Their life doesn't revolve around sin or evil or, or wickedness. But listen, folks, those that walk with the Lord, their delight, their joy, their happiness is in the Word of God. They love God. They love God's way. They love God's Word, and they love His laws and His statutes. And they're walking with God. Oh, what a beautiful walk it is if you know the Lord. Walk with God. Walk with God, church. Let me encourage you. Walk with the Lord, amen. <laughs> Let me ask you, how is your walk today? No, really. How is your walk with God? Because I mean, I, there are people like, I'm like, I'm like, they say they're saved and they know Jesus. And then they're talking about when they went out and partied and had a, they got drunk and they had, they had all this and that. And they're, you know, cussing. Man, people say they're walking with God and they're saved. You get on Facebook and they're cussing. You get on X and they're cussing your Twitter and they're cussing. You get on TikTok and they're cussing. Amen. They walk with God. They say they have a relationship with the Lord. They, they put scriptures up there. And the next thing you know, they're talking about when they, 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 they got drunk or their immorality or whatever. You're not walking with God. You're walking with the devil. Let's just call it out for what it is. Listen, in Luke chapter 18, Jesus said, when he comes back to this earth, will he find any faith? I don't think Jesus is going to find much faith left on this earth. I think it's going to be like the days of Noah. Eight were on the ark. I am so disappointed 
with Christians. I love, I love you. I love people. I love you. Don't get me wrong, man. I love you. But, man, I tell you what. I've had to get off of Facebook because I'm so disappointed with the Christian community over the face of the earth. And I'm thinking, they're not walking with God. But I want to ask you, how is your walk with God? Are you walking with God? Are you walking in the Spirit? Are you following the Lord? Are you living for God? Do you feel, do you feel your walk could be closer to God? Maybe, maybe it isn't what it should be. Come on. You, 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 you know it could be better. Well, you, you can make that change today. Enoch walked with God. You can make that change today. Enoch walked with God. In fact, the Bible said, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. This must have been some kind of walk. Enoch was so close to God. He was so faithful to the Lord that Enoch knew God so intimately that God just took him home and that God translated him. Enoch did not experience death. There, there, there's one pastor, you know, I read this. I read this from this pastor. And that he, he, he preached that Enoch died. Well, after that, I threw it away. Forget it. He didn't know what he's talking about. I, I'm not sure what Bible he's reading, but it's not the Holy Bible. Because the I'll prove it to you in a moment. The Bible clearly says that Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him, right? It doesn't say that Enoch died. It doesn't say that Enoch was buried with his fathers. Why? Because Enoch was translated. God just took him home. The walk with God was so good that God decided to bring Enoch home to be with God in heaven. Pooh. Wow. Let me prove to you now because we want to live by the Bible, right? We don't want to, you got to back up what I say, what any other minister says. I don't care. This guy, it was a doctorate, had a doctorate in theology. I don't have a doctorate degree in theology, and I'm not against that. But I'm just saying he should know better, okay? All right? Now, look at here. The Bible said in Hebrews 11, 5, By faith Enoch was taken up away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. It said that he did not see death. You see it? <laughs> it's not hard. It's not difficult. Hey, man, he didn't see death. He bypassed death. He passed gold, collected 200 bucks. Man, way to go. Hallelujah. Just, hey, man, I imagine, I imagine that the funeral home was probably disappointed because they didn't make any money off of Enoch. It costs a lot of money to die these days. Lord, have mercy. Oh, man, Lord, have you got ten dollars or $12,000, that's what it's going to take to die. Isn't that something? That's a racket. Huh? Yeah? I think I just won't die. Bad, and the rapture takes place, they're going to miss out on a lot of money. <laughs> Come on, folks. Help me out here. Hey, man, you know what I'm talking about. Thank God, man. Enoch, man, I tell you what. <laughs> He bypassed death. Hey, man, he passed gold, collected $200, just like when Philip was translated, God translated Enoch. There's another person uh, who's never, uh, never saw death. His name is what? Elijah. Elijah and Enoch will probably be the two witnesses during the seven-year tribulation. Uh, Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind, a chariot of fire. What a sight that must have been. Elijah was taken up, caught up in heaven. Uh, he was raptured up. Think about this. Enoch walked. His walk was so close to God that God just took him home. Uh, Enoch was raptured up. Uh, he was translated from earth to heaven uh, just like that. One minute he's on the earth, and the next minute he's in heaven, the presence of the Lord. Let me ask you, let me ask, is your walk so close with God that when the, time's come, when the time comes that you will be one of the ones that will be raptured up? The Bible says two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Will you be the one, be the one taken or you are, are you the one left? The Bible says two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Will you be the one taken or will you be the one left behind? Jesus says, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Jesus is coming. 
I've got news for you, folks. He's coming back for his church. He's coming back for the saved. He's coming back for his own. But not everyone is ready. They don't have the right kind of walk. Uh, come on now. Come on. I didn't say their talk. Their talk should follow their walk if they're walking with God. And their walk should follow their talk. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you really are walking with the Lord, then you're going to want to obey the word of God. Oh, my friend, there are many that don't have a right walk. They're not walking with God. Most are holding one hand with the world and one hand with God. And friend, that doesn't cut it. That doesn't cut it. I carry booze in one hand and the Bible in the other. What happened to separation and holiness? See, God, what's he looking for out of us? He's looking for a holy walk, a separated walk, a pure walk, a genuine walk, a true walk. A sincere walk, a blameless walk, a faith walk, a walk that's so close to God that when the time comes, we'll be translated out of the world, caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't know. I, I, I know this. I know that Jesus is coming again. I believe we're living in the last days. These days are evil. These days are wicked. All right? These are the days when all those involved with Epstein get away with it on this earth, but they won't get away with it with God. We're living in perilous times. No law or justice these days. Jesus can come at any moment. I'm looking forward to the soon return of our Savior, as the Bible says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. But do you know it's possible to be caught up with God right now? Yes, I know that Jesus is coming, and, and when he comes, those who belong to God will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The Bible tells us this, okay? But, friend, we can also be caught up with the Lord right now in the Holy Ghost. We can be caught up with the Lord in the Spirit. Let me ask you this. What are you waiting for? Men, what are you waiting for? Ladies, what are you waiting for? Sir, ma'am, what are you waiting for? Oh, man. Can we get a spiritual fire kindled underneath us again? Lord Jesus. Amen. We can meet the Lord right now and right here. John was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day. Well, folks, this is the Lord's day. Hallelujah. Let's be caught up in the spirit. Don't be reserved. Don't be shy. Be caught up. Come into the inner courts. Come into the presence of God. Worship him. Praise him. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus. He's the one that will save and deliver and set you free. We okay? All right. I'm going to give you hope. I'm halfway through. <laughs> According to the notes anyway. <laughs> All right. So you can be caught up in Jesus. You can be caught up in the spirit. You can encounter a touch of God today. You can experience his glorious power and presence. You can have an encounter with the Lord. God can give you a revelation of himself. You can be renewed and refreshed and, and revived. Don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss out on the blessings of God. You can walk with God and experience God. And you can have a God encounter. Enoch had such a powerful God encounter that the Lord just took him home. God translated him. Boom! He's in heaven. I don't know. You can only imagine. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe, maybe Enoch was, maybe he was, maybe he's reading the Bible. It's before that, but anyway, just give you an idea, okay? I know that. I realize that. You know, and, and maybe he's just reading the Bible, you know, like a, like a good Christian, right? Just the word of God, right? He's reading the Bible, and all of a sudden he looks up, and he's in heaven. Whoa! <laughs> Maybe, 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 maybe he was praying. Maybe he was just seeking the face of God. And maybe he was just spending time in the presence of the Lord. And he gets up and he's in heaven. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. I guarantee you this. We will miss our loved ones. Yes, we will. You better believe it. But I can guarantee you this. Every loved one that made it to heaven, if you ask them if they want to come back to this earth, they would say thanks, but no thanks. I'm in the presence of the Lord. Talk about such love and such glory. The presence of God. All oh, Enoch was taken up. Thank God that he was. Amen. Hallelujah. God translated him. So there's a correlation between walking with God and pleasing God. Because if you're going to walk with God, you'll have to be a man or a woman of faith. And we know that faith pleases God. See, Enoch walked with God and he was translated. If you want to be translated, then you need to walk with God. If you want to get out of here when the trumpet sounds, then you're going to have to be walking with God. Jesus is coming for his saints and then Jesus will come with his saints. When Jesus comes for his saints, that's the rapture. When Jesus comes with his saints, that's the second coming. Two separate events. 
not only did Enoch walk with God, but he also was a prophet. The book of Judge, uh, book of Jude mentions Enoch. Look at Jude 14 and 15. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, listen to this, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment to all, to convict all who are ungodly among all them, all of their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This man lived in a day that was before the flood, a day of evil, a day of perversion, a day of wickedness. He lived in a time which would be called perilous times. We'll talk about that more at another time, but it tells us this, that it's possible to live holy in an unholy world. Amen. Enoch lived holy. So, we need to stop with our excuses. Because you're not going to make it. Quit blaming everything on the devil. When it's you that made the wrong decision. Man up. Man up. Somebody man up. Come on. Thank you. Men, got to man up. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Quit, quit making excuses. Enoch lived before the cross. He lived before Calvary. He lived before the blood, before the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, before Pentecost. And yet he walked with God in an unholy world. It was during perilous times, wicked times, sinful times. But Enoch had this testimony. What was his testimony? He walked with God. And if Enoch walked with God, then I know that we can walk with God. Turn to somebody and say, you can walk with God. Go ahead. Encourage each other. You can walk with God. You can walk with God. You can walk with God. Enoch had this testimony. If you're walking with God, you've got a testimony. Praise God. You're not walking according to the ways of the world. You're not walking according to the lust of the flesh. You're walking according to the word of God. You have a testimony. Your light shines. You sparkle. That's right. Sparkle. That's what someone said to me the other day. They said, you sparkle. <laughs> I never heard that before. Actually, I was getting my hair cut. I said, yeah, I just, I just turned 60. I said, on my birthday, you know, I had a, a barbecue. My, my boys did, you know, and my girl, my boys did, shocked me. Daylight Church had a fellowship. They got it past me. I didn't know how they did it. I didn't hear nobody make a mistake. I didn't see any food coming down. And I, I, I don't smell so very good, so I didn't smell the food. But this sure was good. So I, I, I said, man, I'm sitting in the chair. I said, you know, I said, I used to be blonde. Then it turned to dirty blonde. Then it turned to brown. And I said, then it turned to this. I said, it's white. And she says, no. She said, you just sparkle. <laughs> that was the kindest thing I've heard in a long time. <laughs> I think I'm going to adopt you. You're same age as my kids, okay? Hallelujah. And so I'm checking out, right? I'm checking out. And I'm, I'm making a joke of it. And there's a lot of people that are really crowded on Friday. I'm just making fun, you know. And I said, I'm going to tell my wife you said I sparkle, you know. And the lady that overheard me about the kidney whose niece had passed away when she was dying and donated her kidneys, she's going out the door and she says, you do sparkle. And that's something. Let your light shine, man. Sparkle. <laughs> Get some sparks on you. <laughs> you know those sparklers? You know those sparklers you talk about? They're a lot of fun, right? Then it's like, oh man, the sparks, you know. <laughs> That's what we should be like those, you know, just sparkle, just sparkle, just sparkle, just sparkle. I'm so glad you're doing better. Sister, she was in the hospital. I'm so glad she's doing better. Amen. Praise God. Pray for her, okay? Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, friend, this is a time to let your light shine. This is a time to walk with God. This is a time to sparkle where other people can notice, praise the Lord. And they can notice a witness. you got a witness. Christ lives inside of you. You're walking in him. Amen. You're walking with the Lord. Praise God. Let your light shine. Oh, what do you want to be known for? I pray that on my tombstone they will write, Pastor Mark Malden, he walked with God. I don't want to be known for anything else. Some will be known for their work. Some will be known for their careers. Some will be known for their money and their riches. Some will be known for being greedy and stingy. 
Some will be known for being nice or mean. Some will be known for being a sports addict. But I pray that we can be known as one who walked with God. What's Enoch known for? For walking with God. That's how he's known. In fact, when you hear the word Enoch, you immediately think, walk with God. Look at Enoch's testimony. Not much is said about him, but what is said is powerful. In Genesis, it says that Adam lived so many years, and then he died. Seth lived and had sons and daughters, and then he died. Enosh lived, had sons and daughters, and then he died. Canaan lived and had sons and daughters, and then he died. Jared lived, had sons and daughters, and then he died. Then in the middle of all that, the Bible says, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. What a testimony. Right in the middle of the genealogy of things. Boom, the Holy Ghost says, hold it. There's something I want you to see. It pops out off the pages of the Bible and says that Enoch walked with God and he was not for God. Took him, boom, 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 right in the middle of that. Hallelujah. Isn't that something? There's a great song, a hymn, just a closer walk with thee. Do you know it? Maybe you heard it before. It's a great song. It goes like this. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it be. Okay, I don't want to. I can't sing, but you know what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. It's like that. It's great stuff, isn't it? Through this world of toil and snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just a closer walk with thee, granted Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is o'er, time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely o'er, to thy kingdom shore to thy shore just a closer walk with thee hallelujah i'm gonna tell you something you're checking out of here one day it's either heaven or hell that's it man no in between no purgatory none of that foolishness that's all made up by man i would just have purgatory there's not the purgatory in the bible there's no purgatory read it read it <laughs> read the book that's made up that's made up well, why, why, how, where did that come from? Well, it came from Catholicism. Way back. 300, 400, 500, I don't know, somewhere back. Long time ago, way before our time. Well, why'd they do that? Well, because, you know, nothing, I'm just going to say this. I'm not trying to beat up anybody, but the Catholic Church is run, running out of money. And so they said, I'll tell you what. If you'll keep coming to church and you'll pay your tithes and you'll give, we'll pray your loved ones out of purgatory into heaven. And so that's what we're going to do. So, I don't know. Maybe I might start doing that here. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Sorry. I got some sermons you need to hear. <laughs> but that's what they did. And so people to this day still believe there's a purgatory, and there is no purgatory. Okay, it's heaven or hell. What kind of walk do we have? What kind of walk do we need to have? If we want to be taken up in the rapture, if you want to, if you want to check out of here when the time comes, what kind of walk should we have in these last days? Well, there are six walking points we need to have. Now, I want to say this. You got to be grateful because I'm only going to cover one today, okay? Isn't that good? Isn't that good? I, the thing about a Pentecostal church is that by the time we go eat at a restaurant, all the Baptists and Methodists have gone home. Okay, so just hold on, okay? Number one, number one, we need to have a prudent walk. That's a life-changing walk. Number two, a progressive walk. That's growth and development. Number three, a pleasing walk. That's faith walk. Number four, a praying walk. Enoch diligently sought God. Number five, a pure walk, holy and separate. Number six, a preaching walk. He prophesied about the coming pending judgment of God. 
what kind of walk did Enoch have? Number one, he had a prudent walk. Okay, let me just a few more minutes, okay? The scripture declares twice that Enoch walked with God. Walking indicates forward movement. It means steady progress. Enoch didn't walk a little and then stop and turn aside. He didn't backslide. He didn't grow cold or apathetical or lukewarm. He was on fire. Let me tell you something. In the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 5, Enoch was on fire. Everybody else was living in wickedness, but Enoch has the fire of God. In fact, the name Enoch means this, dedicated, disciplined. Enoch means dedicated or disciplined. Once Enoch turned his life over to the Lord, he was devoted, committed, and loyal to God. Once he surrendered to God. Now, by the way, hold on, hold on, let me just say this. He probably didn't have a church to go to. He probably didn't have much fellowship. He didn't have somebody calling him up every other day asking where they are. This guy got it. And when you got it, you got it, baby. You got it. Man, when you got it, you got it. And I tell you what, when I was 27, I got it. And when I got it, I got it. Would you get it? Brother, Brother Scott, did you get it? You got it, right? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Matt Styers, did you get it? You got it. Oh, glory to God. Praise the Lord. That's right. You got it? You got it? You got it? Brother Larry, do you got it? You got it. <laughs> Amen. You better have it. <laughs> you better get, you better, you better have or you're going to get it, right? All right. So, so we find out that, that he didn't turn back. He didn't backslide. He didn't look back. Enoch was genuine through and through. He was the real deal. Enoch was, right? He was steadfast. He persevered. He walked with God consistently. Now, what does that mean? Consistently means this. Constantly, regularly, or steadily. Okay? See, we're living in a day and time where of inconsistency in the church irregularity in the church. We're living in an apostate time, whether you want to believe it or not. Christians think they can live just like the world and still be right with God. How can two walk together lest they be agreed? And if God is not in agreement with you, you're not walking with him. And, and, and by the way, we got this mentality that God has to agree with me. God, you have to agree with me. You have to agree with me. You have to agree with me. Where does that say? Where is that in the Bible? No, no, no. You have to agree with God. God's word doesn't change. His word is the standard of our faith and conduct. We rise to the level of the standard of the word of God. We don't bring the word of God down to the level of our living. We rise to the standard of living according to God's word. Amen. God doesn't change. If you want to walk with God, you have to agree with God. So here we are. Something is going on with Christians today. It has to do with social media. It has to do with fake book. It has to do with uh, tic tac talk, ticky, ticky tock, took, talk. Think about this. Something's happened. Something's going on with Christians. I'm going to tell you the truth. You ready for this? You ready? Can you handle it? Christians, the majority of what I'm seeing today is that they're just not stable. You're not stable. An unstable world, who cares what the stupid government's doing? Not my world. Forget it. They just want your money. Ah, forget it. <laughs> I got none. <laughs> Forget it. You know, we get caught up in all this stuff that distracts us from the main purpose. So we're getting all worried and all this and all shook up and this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen. I don't know. I guess the, the House just uh, passed a, a, a bill or a law to uh, that a certain age of people are going to be drafted. You know, and I have... I have one of my son, my, my youngest son falls in that category. Now it's got to go to the, to the Senate to see if it'll pass. And at first I'm like, hmm, huh? hmm, a little shook up there. Oh, hold it. Wait a minute. My God reigns. I will trust the Lord. I will trust God. I will trust the Lord. Amen. Our faith was tested when I had... Our firstborn going to the Marine Corps. Boy, that was a test. Whew. And then our thirdborn wants to 
our second born went to Thailand by herself for three years. A girl. Huh. Boy, we went round and round. Boy, my daughter and I, we, we butted heads on that until I just surrendered to understanding what God was doing. It's hard. Then my third born wanted to be a police officer. And, and the sirens and all the stuff, man, I'll tell you what, it, 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 the nerves test your faith, test your faith. But I'm finding that the Christian community is just not stable. It's an apostate mindset we have today. When it comes to God or dedication or faithfulness, there's much inconsistency more today than ever before. What's going on with Christians? What's wrong with Christians? What's happening to them? Where's the faithfulness? Where's the fire? Where's the dedication? Why do we get on a worldwide platform that we have a voice and blast one another all in the open public? You are a reprobate. You are sick in the head. You are mental. You are unstable. If you want to bash me, come to my face. And I've had to go to people and I have to confront them. I said, why are you putting this? Are you talking about this? Me? Oh, no, pastor, it's not you. <laughs> After you responded a couple days later. What's wrong? What's going on with us? Who do we represent? Who are we walking with? What's our walk represent? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're destroying ourselves from within, and the devil's going, ha, 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 I love it. I look at him, a bunch of, bunch of, no, look at them. <laughs> they just destroy them. Ah, demons leave them alone. They're just destroying themselves. Just forget it. They're doing it to themselves. They gossip about each other. They run each other down. They criticize each other. <laughs> They say they're walking with God and they talk about shacking up with this person or living with this person or, or, or having immoral things with this person. That doesn't sound like a Christian. Once Enoch dedicated his life to God, he was all in. He, he encountered God. A transformation took place. Talk about a testimony. Enoch grew more and more in the faith. Now, listen, people that knew him were probably astonished and amazed of the sudden turnaround. They're like, they probably couldn't believe that this is the same person. They were like saying, this can't be the same guy. This is not the Enoch I know. <laughs> there was such an incredible difference in Enoch, his character, his demeanor. Only God can change a person like that. Only God can make such a drastic difference in a person's life. Just like Paul in chapter 9 of Acts had a life transformation. And now he's preaching in the church and the synagogue that Christ, that Jesus is the son of God. What does this mean? It means that Enoch was prudent, a prudent walk. He had a secure walk in God. Enoch had a conversion experience, a transformation, an alteration. His sins are gone. His past is gone. He's not living like a sinner anymore. There's been a change. What's the Bible say? It says this. Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. We see that in Genesis 5.24. But then the Bible says this in Hebrews 11.5. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God because he walked with God. To walk with God means your life revolves around the Lord. Your life revolves around Christ. God is not just part of your life. He is your life. You're not ashamed of Christ. God is your everything. You live Christ. All your decisions are based on God's word and God's will for your life. In other words, you consider God in every decision. Isn't that good? Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that grand? Isn't that glorious? Hey, 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 for you 60s folks, isn't that groovy? <laughs> Remember them days? I was born in them days. Groovy. Isn't that groovy? Isn't that keen? Oh, how about that? That's the 50s. Keen. Come on, y'all. Sister Laura Lee, you know that. Keen. K-E-E-N. That's the, that's the 50s. 60s was groovy. 70s was, whoa. 
I don't remember the 80s. <laughs> Who knows? What changed Enoch's mind about serving God? What happened when he turned 65? He had his first son, Methuselah. And after having a child, something clicked with Enoch. Maybe, maybe he thought he'd never, uh, maybe he thought, man, I better straighten up. Maybe he realized there's more to life than just himself. Maybe he didn't want his kids turning out like him. He wanted to be a good dad. He wanted to be a good example. Listen, my friends, the best example you can be for your family and for your kids is to walk with God with all your heart. Don't walk with one foot in the world and one foot with God. Jump in with both feet in the river of life. Give God your all. Sell out to Jesus. Dive in. Buy the pearl a great price. Your faithfulness, listen, dads, men, your faithfulness helps your kids. Your consistency helps your family. Your walk with God is a testimony to others. Others see, others take notice, others observe your walk. Not only does God see your walk, but others see your walk. Therefore, our walk has impact. You see, it's more than just about you. It's about others. It's always, we always take things, it's just me, 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 what I want. Do you know what it means to, to be a Christian? Do you know what it means to be a deacon? Do you know what it means to be a, a pastor, an elder? You serve. Serving others. You help others. I mean, let me ask you this. Has anybody in this sanctuary ever given up a vacation because somebody needed help at that time? You don't know what sacrifice is yet until you put your desires aside to help others that are in need. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God, uh, God, God didn't create me just to have a good time on this earth. God uh, created me to serve him. He created me to give him glory. He created me to represent him. He created me to serve others. Selfish people don't serve others. They serve themselves. Selfish. My pregnant daughter-in-law, who's given birth probably at the end of next month, comes here and serves. Swollen feet, tired, hot, flash, Serving. Whether she likes it or not, she's born into the family of ministry. Born into, married into, born into, married into, married into ministry. And like Abby, she says, I'll, I'll wear that badge. Um. I'm going to tell you all something, whether you want to hear it or not, that, that my daughter-in-law, Izzy, it's because of her we have the colors of the chairs, the colors on the wall, and the colors on the door, and the color of the carpet. She does a beautiful job. Come on. We're getting new carpet next month. Serve. Serve. Don't get jealous. Don't get upset. Just change. Just change. Just change. Amen. That's it right there. Change and let God use you. Let God. I, I heard people say this. You know, I'm, I'm sorry if you're visiting today. I'm on my soapbox. I'm sorry. Okay. I've heard people say, but Pastor has his favorites. <laughs> well, I guess I, if you want to call it that, but these are people that are faithful. I can count on to get the job done. I love everybody. I love everybody. And I want to, I pray that everybody would want to be used. But that's just what it is. You make yourself available. Make yourself available. Show up. Be there. Help. What, is, what, what, what does that mean? What's that? It's called a walk with God. It's a walk with God. I don't, I don't want to hear out of your mouths. I can't. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. God doesn't want to hear that. That comes out of doubt and unbelief, but not faith. 
Faith says, I don't know how, but I'm going to believe God to get it done. I don't know how, but I'm going to believe God. Now, your faithfulness helps your kids. Your consistency helps your family. Your walk with God is a testimony to others. Others see and notice and observe your walk. Not only does God see your walk, but others see your walk. Therefore, our walk has impact. You see, it's more than just you. I think Enoch had his first child and realized that he better straighten up. Having children can change a person. They start acting like adults. All of a sudden, they grow up. They get serious about the Lord, their life. Apparently, Enoch got serious with God. The best thing you can do for your family is to walk with God. Enoch's walk was so close to God that God just decided to translate him straight to heaven. He skipped death, and now he's in the presence of God. What a testimony. He got shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I don't know if that's a good word to use these days, but that's what happened. Matthew, is that okay to use that? <laughs> he got shot up. Let me tell you what he had. The best elevator in town, man. Got in that elevator. Poof, there he was, just like that, in the blink of an eye. It goes like this. Poof, with the presence of the Lord. Shot up. Let me ask you this as I close. And I forgot Abby had to go, didn't they? They didn't remind me because I'm 60. I forget. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. How is your walk with God? Do you feel closer to God or do you feel further away relationship-wise? You know, sometimes I feel like, you know, um, man, sometimes I'm like, God, where are you? You know, he's right there. It's just that I've been so busy, pulled in, in so many different directions that I just haven't spent time with him. You got the job. You got the kids. You got the house. You got things you got to do. Responsibilities. I got to get the grass cut. I got to fix this. Got to do that. How do you do lists like this, you know? And, 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 and sometimes you're like, God, where are you? And maybe you're, maybe you're like that today as I come to a close. You're like, God, where are you? You know where he is? He's right here. He's right here. God's right here. Praise God. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Could your walk with God be better? Could it be better? Huh? Men and women, could it be better? See, I love the Lord. I'm saved. But, yeah, it could be better. So how about we do this? How about we work on it? Amen. Let's work on it. Say, God, I want to work on my walk with you. I want to work on my walk. Praise God. That's what I want to do. How about we make an effort to have a better walk with the Lord? And as, and as we make the effort, let's just see what great things God will do with us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to have a closer walk with God. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you want to have a closer walk with God, would you stand up? If you're one of those that says, I want to have a closer walk with the Lord, just stand up. Oh, praise God. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Praise, praise Jesus. Amen. God is good. Let's do it. In a, in a world of wickedness, in a world of evil, in a world of sin, and you know what I'm talking about, and that's everywhere, everywhere. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad, folks. This is calling out for what it is. It's bad, bad, bad. But let me tell you that. In the midst of this world of sin and wickedness and evil, you can walk with God. You can walk with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Make that decision. With every head bowed, let me just ask you this. Close your eyes. And I love you and I appreciate you. And I know today I might have had to say some, maybe some tough things. But sometimes things like that have to be said, but they're said in love. But if you're here today, I want to say this. I know what the will of God is for you. Because if you're here and you're not saved and you're lost and you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, I know it's the will of God for you to be saved, for you to give your heart to Jesus, for you to accept him in your life as Lord and Savior. Amen. And if you're here today, if you're here right now and say, Pastor, I want to accept Jesus into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'll pray for you. 
I'll pray for you. If you're here today, Pastor Mark, I want to make that decision to accept Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I see that hand, honey. I see that hand. I see that hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? There are two people here today that said yes. Anybody else? Praise God. I see. I see three. That's three people. That's three people. Church, pray. Hallelujah. God's a working. God's a touching. I want to accept. I want to become a Christian. I want to be saved. I want to know Jesus as my Savior. If you're watching right now online, hallelujah. And you want to be saved, say yes to God, dude. I'm going to pray with you in a moment. Yesterday at the funeral service, I don't know, five, six, seven people responded to the gospel for salvation. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm telling you, God is at work. God wants you to walk with him. God wants to save you. God wants to wash your sins away. God wants to deliver you. Hallelujah. All oh, church, can we give God praise right now? Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Brother John, would you play one of our CDs very quietly, please? Our instrumentals, please. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to pray with you for a moment. For those that raised their hand, I want you to realize you cannot work your way to heaven. There's nothing you could do to grant God's forgiveness. All you can do is call upon the name of Jesus and accept him as Lord and Savior. You have to recognize that you are a sinner. You have to recognize I'm undone and I want to be saved. I want my sins forgiven. And so you are coming to God on your own free will. The Holy Spirit is drawing you, but you're coming to God right now. So if you raised your hand, I want to pray with you, okay? If you raised your hand, I want to pray with you right now. Folks, for a few more minutes, just hang with me, okay? Praise God. You're talking about souls that are in a balance right now. God is touching. There are three people in this house that God is touching. Praise God. So let's pray together. Praise God. If you want to accept Christ into your heart, if you're here today or you're watching online, I'm going to pray this prayer. As you bow your heads, pray this prayer with me. It's not so much the prayer as it is the condition of your heart. God sees it. God knows. And we come to God and we're saved by faith in Christ. So let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, I come to you by faith in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. He came to this earth and died on the cross in my place. He gave his life. He shed his blood. And on the third day, he rose from the grave. And he's alive forevermore. Dear Jesus, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and that I need saving from my sins. Dear Lord, right now, I repent. I turn away from my sins. I turn away from my old life. I turn away from my old ways. And now I turn to you. I'm asking you to please, dear Lord, wash my sins away. Take away my past and my guilt and my shame. Jesus, please come into my heart and save me. Now, according to your word and by faith, I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' wonderful name, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that in heaven over one sinner that repents that angels are rejoicing over one, over one over one that repents angels are rejoicing God is saving, God is forgiving praise God and now today is the beginning of a new day for you because now you can walk with God you can walk with God there's no separation now between you and God because your sins have been washed away because you came to God by faith isn't that good? Isn't that good? Praise God. Hallelujah. So...
If you raised your hand today and you accepted Jesus as your Savior, come talk to me after service, okay? I just want to meet you in the side room for a moment, okay? Just a couple minutes. Praise God. I want to thank everybody for being here today. I thank our visitors. But I want to do this before we leave. I want to pray for all the men of the church. I want to pray for all the men. So all the men, would you come up here, please, and stand up here in the front? Because you don't realize how valuable you are. You don't know how important you are. Men, mighty men, you are so important. Jimmy, God bless you. Love you, Jimmy. Praise God. Jimmy responded today. I'm excited. His wife responded today. Hallelujah. Where's that little boy at? Where's that little boy? He, he responded too. <laughs> Jesse, do you want to come up? Are you okay? It's up to you. You're okay? You're more than welcome. We love you, Jesse. We're so glad you're here today. And Paula, just love the both of you. God bless you. We pray for you. We do. We pray for you. I know it's, I know it's been tough. I, I know that. But you don't have to walk alone. We can support you. Okay. Praise the Lord. Men, you don't realize how valuable you are. You don't. Sometimes, if you, if you go what I go through, I think, what am I doing? I'm not making an impact. I'm not making a difference. But that's a lie. That's a lie from the devil. God created you to walk with him. And God wants you to walk with him. And he wants you to have such a close walk that you have such a testimony that your light shines and you sparkle to your children, to your wife, to your family, to your kids, to your grandkids. My goodness gracious, hallelujah. So good. I want, if you're, if the wife, if you're here today, I want you to come stand behind your husband. Or if you are a sons or daughters or anybody, come stand behind your dad. Okay, come on up here. It's okay. Or anybody else in the church, come stand behind your husband, stand behind your dad, stand behind your grandpa, whoever it is. Just come and stand. And if, if you got somebody here that, that doesn't have somebody standing behind them, stand behind them too, okay? All right? Hallelujah. Praise God. These men are special. These men are amazing, okay? Amazing, 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 okay? Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe your dad's not with us today. But that's still your dad, okay? That's still your dad. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, I gotta make sure. Make sure we got somebody standing behind everybody. I need someone standing right here. I need, I need someone right here behind Ar Arthur. I need somebody. We got it. We got it covered. You're good. All right, pray. You're good. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. You don't know how important you are, men. God has a plan for your life. God has a call for your life. Now listen, I want you to rise up to that call. You're gonna be challenged. And all hell is going to come against you. And the devil is going to come against you. And the world is going to come against you. If you serve God, you're going to have contrary winds in your face all the time. But I want to tell you, the best thing you can do is serve God. If Enoch can do it, you can do it. If Enoch had a relationship with the Lord, you can have one. If he can have a testimony, you can have a testimony. You've got, we're on this side of the cross, the blood, the power of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling presence of the Lord, praise God. You have help. We have a comforter. We have one that comes alongside of us and helps us to live this life. We have each other where we can hold each other's arms up. We can be a Ben and a her. We can help each other. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why we're, we're in this together. We're a family in Christ. Amen. So this is what I want you to do. I'm going to pray for you, ma'am. I want you people to lay your hands on them. Lay your hands on their back, okay? As we pray right now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we come to you in the name of the Lord. I thank you, God, for this glorious day that you have made. Every person that is here, it is not by accident, but, but divine intervention. Lord, you led them here. There's something you're trying to speak to their heart. There's something you're trying to say to them. And I know this, Jesus, that you love these men, that you've called these men, that, Lord, there's a purpose for each one. Oh, Father, as a man, or as a dad, or as a grandfather, as an uncle, as a husband, whatever it may be. God, I'm praying for these men. The special hand of God, the touch of the Lord. I pray for the anointing of God upon their lives that these men will sparkle today. These men will sparkle in their life. These men will be a living testimony to their children and to their families of what it is to have a walk with God, what it is to be saved, what it is to know the Lord and to serve Him. 
I pray, Father, for their safety. I pray, Father, for the anointing because I know the devil will come against such men that have chosen to live a pure walk, that have, that Lord, have set themselves aside from the wickedness of this world to live a holy life unto God. I realize they'll be a target, but greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Oh, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will rise up a standard against it. We can put on the armor of God and we can pray for each other. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. So I pray. I pray. Now listen, man, man, some of you are here and you might be tired. You might be weary. You might be discouraged. You might wonder, how am I going to do this? I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to do this by first of all, taking it to God. There may be some things you have to change in your life to spend more time with the Lord. But you have to realize that your light and testimony impacts more than just yourself. It impacts your family. That man is to be the priest of his home. That man is to rise up and be that godly leader directing his family in the ways of the Lord. God has tapped you. He has touched you. He has called you for this. And God is saying, now listen, it's time to fulfill that call. I want you to rise up. And I want you to lead your family. I want you to be a, a blessing. I want you to be a light. I want you to sparkle. I want you. Praise God. I have my little grandson. I believe he's, I believe he's a year and a half old. Just the other day, right? Isn't that right? And I'm telling you, that little boy, he looks up to his daddy. That little boy looks up to his daddy. His daddy is the whole world to him. Praise God. That example that we set right now will impact children forever and eternity. It can determine whether they end up in heaven or hell. I tell you that. That's how important this is. They look to you like you're everything. And when you represent God, they see the reflection of Christ in that dad. Praise God. I'm not saying that we're perfect. I'm not saying we don't make mistakes or falter. But I'm telling you, men, I'm telling you, God has called you to rise up today and to be the priest of your home. Praise God. So, Lord, I pray, touch the men. Some may be discouraged, some may be weary, some may be worn, but God, I'm asking you to strengthen them and help them, lift them up. Lord, I pray that you breathe just a fresh faith in their lungs, spiritual lungs. Lord, I pray, oh God, thanking you for all these men, husbands, dads, men. Lord, thank you for them. Thank you for those that responded to salvation today. And Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Give your dad a hug. Give your husband a hug. Amen. Give your grandpa a hug. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, boys. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. If you've given your heart to the Lord today and got saved, you've, you believe you, that you've prayed that prayer with honesty and gotten saved, I'd love to talk to you just for a few moments. Right, I won't keep you long after service. Praise God. Well, folks, listen, I, I pray you have a wonderful day today. I pray that um, you enjoy your time with your families and uh, your loved ones today and uh, praise God so we don't have service tonight and uh, you just have a, a glorious day in the Lord now um, I do want to say this let me, let me say this this week we have the next five days a heat warning it's going to be up in the mid 90's maybe close to 100 um, if anybody listen be careful when you go outside 
Um, we'll be air conditioned inside the church for prayer meeting, for midweek service. We'll have all the ACs on, okay? Um, but if, you know, you need any help, whatever, let me know, okay? Let me know. And uh, make sure you keep yourself hydrated with water, okay? All right, sound good? Praise God. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Let's all stand together, okay? God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. This is how we're going to dismiss today. I just want you to greet each other. Just greet each other, okay? Amen. Shake your hands. Hey, thank you, visitors. Come back. Come back. I pray that the Word of God was a challenge to you, that you learned something today. We're going to continue this series about Enoch, okay? I've got, I've got five more points i got to get through. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless every one of you. Love you. Have a wonderful afternoon, wonderful day. Happy Father's Day. Amen.